Dear colleagues, good day. Today we shall be talking about the opportunities for filmmaking in the northwest of Russia. And let me introduce our today's guests. Svetlana Maksimchenko, the head of the Department of Cinematography of the Ministry of Culture of the Russian Federation. Yevgenia Danichenko, in charge of the Creative Industries Exports from the Russian Export Center. Olga Kaiverzina, the head of Film Commission of the region of Kaliningrad. Malina Lukashova, the head of Film Commission of the region of Novgorod. And Svetlana Saldatova, the head of the Center for Development of Filmmaking and Film Commission of the region of Murmansk. In Russia, the Institution of Film Commission has been developing quite intensively in the last years, and more and more regions begin to work systematically to engage filmmakers from abroad in their regions, in order to develop not only creative industries, but also tourism. We can confidently say now that starting with the farthest east to the very west of Russia, Film commissions are being created, and all of the key locations, all of the variety of sites and locations for shooting in Russia is now available to filmmakers from all over the world. And uh, today, in the beginning of our discussion, we shall watch two trailers dedicated to regions, the region of Kamchatka in the far east and the region of Kaliningrad in the west. These are the two keys to Russia. Both regions start with K, but they're very diverse, and the diversity that our country can provide to foreign filmmakers is quite evident and very impressive. So please, the trailer of Kamchatka. The Film Commission in Kamchatka is only being created, while in the region of Kaliningrad, that we're going to be talking about now, the Commission has been working for two years now, and let us see about the opportunities and locations in the region of Kaliningrad.
Now I would like to hand the floor to Svetlana Maksimchenko. She will be telling about how today the Ministry of Culture of the Russian Federation is supervising the actions to invite and engage uh, foreign filmmakers to Russia. So what are your priorities now? Hello. Three months ago, you could know me or you could introduce me as the head of Moscow Film Commission because uh, I was the one who founded it back in 2018. So for two and a half years I launched uh, the work of this commission in Moscow. And now I'm the head of the uh, Department of uh, Cinematography in the Ministry of Culture of Russia and I'm planning to focus on the development of film commissions in the regions of Russia. Here you can see the map of Russia. 18 commissions are already founded in Russia and 16 commissions are being established right now. Of course, we have uh, cinema commissions not in all regions of Russia, but uh, a start has been made and you rightly mentioned from Kaliningrad to the seaside we have a lot of film commissions. First of all, they focus on the creation of national movies, but many film commissions help and provide assistance uh, to foreign teams uh, and attract uh, international projects to Russia. Of course, our task is to make sure that uh, film commissions help national and foreign projects to film in different uh, regions of Russia. This is exactly the goal why we want to create the Russian Film Commission, which will help regional commissions on the one hand and filmmakers on the other other hand. It will help them understand where and how to shoot movies, what opportunities we have, what services we can render, what financial services are there. We can provide consultations and help organize the film making for film producers from various countries of the world who are interested in filmmaking in Russia. Of course, one year ago, in September 2019, we organized a, a conference, symposium. It was in St. Petersburg. It was organized by AFCI, it's an International Film Commission Association, where we discussed uh, an opportunity to make movies in Russia. A big disadvantage was the uh, absence of rebate, and, and I'm sure that Evgenia Daminchenko will tell us more about rebate program in Russia, and we can see certain steps taken by the government of Russia to launch rebates for foreign film producers. And as for the regional financial support, co-productions can claim for it. And these are the projects made together with Russian companies. And you can apply for financial support in addition to rebates. Of course, we are at the beginning of our way and many commissions were established starting from 2016. In Moscow, it was founded in 2018. But we also have colleagues from Kaliningrad, for example, from the Liki Novgorod, who are happy to share their experience. And there are new film commissions established in the north of Russia, and it's great that the regions of Russia support film production. There is administrative support. Um, we help uh, organize the filmmaking process, and there's financial support too. I hope that this process will continue, and we will be really happy to host uh, international teams and international companies here in Russia. We will provide all necessary assistance. The Ministry of Culture is interested in it, and we will continue to work in this direction. Thank you. Svetlana, thank you. The question, if they create this federal, national film commission, will this commission coordinate the activities of regional commissions and provide support to international producers, or it will mostly work with the regional commissions on methodological level and also do some promotion of Russia as a country for filmmaking? There is no doubt that we plan to coordinate our efforts. I mean, we have already updated our information about the commissions in Russia, which already exist and which are being established in the regions of Russia 
Russia. As far as uh, the operation of a film commission in different region is concerned, we are happy to provide this information to Russian and international teams. And there is no doubt that we will help with the organization of the process in case if you need it. We will help to establish new film commissions and this is the type of activity which is supported by the government. The regional governments also speak about it, they focus on it and we will do our best to be useful for regional film commissions. As far as the Russian Film Commission is concerned, then uh, we will provide assistance uh, to all the regions where there are no film commissions to establish them and we will work with our colleagues from the regions, uh, we will work with filmmakers and provide consultations to them. We will always tell them where and how you can make movies in Russia, what financial support you can receive, uh, what conditions we have. For now, the project of um, uh, commission founding is uh, regarded and reviewed by the government and I'm sure that next year we will launch this work. Thank you. Thank you, Svetlana. Many international producers and foreign filmmakers and partners have been saying for quite a while that there is a strong need for this federal film commission in Russia and of course the commission will promote the country on the international market. And specifically, if there will be rebates taking into account the low exchange rate of Russian ruble, that will radically change the situation on the Russian filmmaking market. And of course, we all do understand that this is very important for Russian filmmaking and for our tourism industry as well. That is the new impulse for development. Evgenia, a question to you, I guess. Tell us about the opportunities of this new program. Will it launch next year and is there a chance for the rebate? The rebate program is a federal program. It's already written and accepted by the government. It happened in November 2019. As a matter of fact, as it happened one year ago. Unfortunately, because of all the sad events happening around the world in 2020, we didn't have a chance to launch the program and test it the way it was written and presented. Despite this fact, of course, we understand that it is necessary to launch the program to develop it further on. It is necessary to finance it. This necessity really exists. We expect uh, that beautiful period of time when finally the borders uh, are opened and people can come to us and implement their projects here. Of course, the industry is not idling its time away. We can see that there are a lot of negotiations going on between the Russian producers and international production studios. They discuss opportunities to make films completely or partially in Russia. The negotiations uh, are not only about uh, the filmmaking of uh, feature films uh, and uh, TV shows, uh, and the negotiations take place between animation studios too. For example, in September, we collected a list of projects uh, who are almost ready to be launched, and 10 companies said that they are ready anytime. Let us know when it is possible. So we keep our eyes on the ball, we check the demand and the interest of uh, people, and of course we are going to scale the program as soon as we launch the pilot version. As I have mentioned before, before, last year we agreed on the financing of the program in order to show the synergetic effect of the implementation of rebate program on economic aspects in various branches and various types of business. They go far beyond film production and there are positive signals uh, that uh, such program is going to be implemented next year because the vaccine is being created. Hopefully we will receive applications at the end of winter. 
As far as financing is concerned, it will be distributed throughout a year. We will announce a competition. We will have windows to receive the documents each quarter until we completely exhaust all the financial resources for this calendar year. So we will, as I mentioned, open windows at certain period of time. Who can apply? First of all, this program is created for the international projects. I would like to repeat once again that only international projects can participate in this rebate program. This is for the companies who want to move part of their shooting process to Russia. In order to apply for this program, the international production company will have to find a Russian partner represented by producer, production service or any legal entity which is allowed to implement this kind of activity in Russia. Then they will have to conclude a contract on cooperation where they can describe exclusions, namely that if the project doesn't win the competition, the contract between the foreign party and the Russian legal entity is obligatory to apply, but at the same time we understand that uh, Various situations can happen, and we would like to make sure that this contract is brought to life and has legal force only in preferable economic conditions. The Russian company, contractor in Russia, can apply on behalf of the international project. The list of all the documents that you have to submit is already there. It is described in the decree of the government of Russia. I would like to separately make a note that projects of full-length films, TV series, full-length animation, TV series animation and uh, documentaries uh, can apply. Products should comply with certain criteria. I mean, you can apply with the projects where, in terms of full-length films, uh, you spend no less than 15 million rubles in Russia. Again, that was about full-length films and TV series. As far as uh, animation products are concerned, you have to spend no less than 5 million rubles in Russia. And as far as documentaries uh, and documentary TV series are concerned, you have to spend uh, only 3 million 750 uh, rubles uh, in Russia. It's a formal criterion, but uh, it can help us choose the best projects and avoid uh, low-budget projects. Uh, to receive a rebate, the project should comply with uh, other circumstances, uh, and then uh, you can apply only for 30 or 40 percent of rebate. The more Russian experts, the more Russian professionals and services you attract in Russia, the higher the percentage of rebate is for the project when it is over. Another important thing is that uh, the money will be given in advance. It will be given in advance. We will choose the projects, we will choose the finalists, and at the level of the government it will be decided. And then uh, we are going to give a part of money to the account of the project, which you can spend. It's not possible to claim for already made expenses. I mean, you first have to agree on the expenses, receive the money and then spend the money. That is a specific feature 
which you can find in the decree of the Russian government. It might surprise um, some of our foreign partners, but on the other hand, it can inspire them, because you receive additional funds that you can attract at the stage of film production. Of course, uh, when the program is over, you will have to submit uh, reports uh, and uh, show your expenditures. Um, and if everything is fine and agreed upon, uh, we can close our contractual obligations and shake our hands. If uh, there are some expenditures uh, that you cannot prove, then this part of money will have to be returned to the budget of the rebate program. All in all, we are expecting the time when we can implement the pilot project. We count uh, on the fact that the situation with closed borders will become better soon and we will host the first project. But I would like to tell you that that is not the end of our assistance. We try to take steps to help develop business in Russia. This year it was the first time when we organized competitions and gave money to the Russian companies which have plans to work with the international viewers and international partners. We are happy to announce that now when working with Russian production services in animation and uh, feature films, uh, foreign partners uh, can count on additional funds coming from the government uh, of Russia in order to support uh, this business. We can subsidize uh, your expenditures uh, for marketing Russian projects abroad, online or offline. You can spend this money to support the first runs in cinemas, uh, or you can spend this money in order to attract B to C viewers, uh, and you can spend this money to organize advertisement and commercials on the internet. Within the framework of the program, we provide financial assistance for expenditures necessary to adaptation, because sometimes it's necessary to adapt the projects in terms of language and mindset. We know that animators, for example, face situations when they have to change jokes or add characters depending on the mindset of this or that region. I am convinced that these are are the questions which filmmakers face when they develop uh, their uh, scenario or when they try to sell their projects. The TV channels can say, uh, we will be happy to take your project if you introduce certain amendments. It's a serious type of work and we are happy to co-finance it. That's why um, I would like to encourage our international partners, uh, all our potential partners, to seize this opportunity. And when negotiating with Russian companies, please do not forget that you can always uh, encourage your Russian partners uh, to use our program. I think that that is the, everything I wanted to tell you. Evgenia, thank you so much. That was very informative. As a matter of fact, if they get to launch this program for rebates, Russia will be following other countries that are doing similar initiatives for rebates. Greece has done that. The countries of Eastern Europe are following and entering the market with new initiatives. So we should really be in line and follow the trend here not to let go of the situation and keep coming up with the new and new incentives. I mean, it's great that we are not standing still and moving forwards, not only on federal, but also on regional level. Now I would like to hand the floor to Nikita Trinkin. He represents the Association of Film and TV Producers. Dear colleagues, good day. Thank you for the invitation to participate in the conference. On behalf of the Association of Film and TV Producers, I'd like to say that we fully encourage the creation of Federal Film Commission and, of course, the program for federal rebates. 
as the representatives of the industry, for many years we've been saying that these two elements, film commission and rebates, are the fundamental parts of the support and development of film industry in the country. But of course, the system is not confined only to these two elements. And now I would like to talk about other important factors that producers take into account when they pick a location for shooting. Firstly, let's talk about the set of objective factors that characterize the region, for example, transportation accessibility, the level of prices, which is much dependent on the national currency exchange rate, the level of security, the level of infrastructure, specifically hotels and restaurants, availability of local resources, which includes staff, gear, special means of transportation, and other things like that. In addition, of course, it's important to have uh, decent uh, local partners, because even if you want to apply to federal rebate program, you need to have a contract with a local producer. International producers mostly work from habit. They prefer to walk the well-trodden paths, use verified tools, and uh, go to the places that they know. So for a new territory, it's especially hard to put itself on the map of international filmmaking. But since that's been done, the further development becomes much easier. Our Association of Film and TV Producers puts together 35 major organizations that produce visual content in Russia. Overall, our member organizations produce over 60% of the entire major audiovisual content in Russia. And since 2016, together with the Ministry of Culture, the Film Foundation and the Agency for Strategic Initiatives in Russia, we have been developing the programs for regional rebates and support today the program for federal rebates. And as soon as the program launches, our association will do its best to support it and promote it in every way. I mean to say that lots of members of our association have international, permanent international partners, co-producers, distributors, clients. We have projects with international partners. Those projects are in development or on the stage of pre-production. As soon as the borders are open, as soon as the program launches, we'll tell all of our partners that this program is happening and we will streamline all of our projects to that program. As the association, we're always ready to support the production services of all the projects. We have been working in every region of the country where there is film commission, and our association is ready to guarantee the quality of services provided by its members. Thank you so much. Thank you. Since we're all on tight schedule, Olga, we've seen the video, tell us more. Hello, everyone. Let me tell you a few words uh, about uh, the opportunities of Kaliningrad. We can offer full cycle. We have all the necessary personnel, equipment, and we can provide any administrative support which might be required. This year, the decree has been changed according to which rebates are given. And this year, if you attract foreign partners or if you have a co-production, you have additional 3% in addition to 20% rebate. So if you attract foreign partners or if you attract co-production, we give you additional 3%. What kind of infrastructure can we offer? Starting from this year, we have English-speaking employees in our office. They provide consultations. We work really quickly. Within 48 hours upon request of the film company, we provide photos of necessary locations with geomarks. In addition to that, we provide complete information on accommodation of personnel and uh, everyday needs necessary for the filmmaking team in Kaliningrad region. You receive a letter from us within 48 hours.
This summer, there were 13 film companies working in our region. They made 13 movies and we covered 70% of personnel and equipment. We brought equipment from Minsk and St. Petersburg and there were also people from Moscow and St. Petersburg. This year, we created a school where we teach the support and personnel, mechanics, technicians and assistants. And I hope that starting from the next year we can cover 100% of needs in terms of administrative personnel or support and personnel. I hope that they will come only from our region. Could you please maybe tell about some actual successful cases of working with foreign film producers or successfully working with major Russian production companies? when you fully supervise the project on a high level? Unfortunately, we cannot boast uh, of cooperation with European companies. Next year we plan to have uh, three films made in Kaliningrad. And this year uh, we cooperated with the Sreda uh, company for 54 days. They shot a thriller film here called, called Scythe. And uh, our film commission was their guardian angel. We were always with them. If it was necessary to receive permissions, to close the roads, to receive administrative support, to shoot uh, in the uh, cultural heritage site, um, to provide assistance um, in any cases, choice of extras, choice of actors, we worked together for two months of summer. They were successful. The company wrote a gratitude letter to our film commission. It was uh, a test drive um, of uh, our activity. It was successful and we are ready to move ahead and attract international partners. Olga, thank you so much. Thank you for your story. And happy birthday! I mean, you are at this talk with us at your birthday, so thank you so much for being here with us today. Now let us see the trailer of the region of Novgorod. This trailer will show the locations of the region, and then we'll hand the floor to Marina Lukashova, the director of Novgorod Film Commission. Marina, can you please tell us about your experience and how Film Commission works in the region of Novgorod? How do you supervise film production with international producers? Hello, I'm happy to greet you all, dear friends and colleagues. Before I tell you about our activity on cooperation with cinema companies, last year we had good experience in cooperating with foreign production companies. The most important important thing which attracts uh, people to Veliki Novgorod and our international partners often come to us uh, uh, to um, make movies uh, in our museums and open-air museums and of course uh, the biggest thing here is uh, cultural heritage it's the oldest uh, city of uh, Russia it has the history of uh, 1000 years it's the center of trade and craft industry 
and I would like to tell a few words uh, for our partners from abroad. Veliki Novgorod it was uh, a city where the way from the Varangians to the Greeks went through and it gave a lot of advantages for development. It was recognized also in Europe. And by the way, back then in medieval times, uh, the Gothic uh, trade yards were located here. Peter the Great uh, made window to Europe with St. Petersburg, but many years before Veliki Novgorod was a door to Europe. The first birch bark letters um, also come from Veliki Novgorod, and many people are interested in this topic. Many uh, filmmakers are interested in it, especially those who make documentaries. And I would like to remind you that the first birch bark letters are dated the 11th century. The history of the city is related to the history of the Russian state. I'm talking about uh, such unique events uh, as the uh, development of democracy and foundation of a republic. It was the first republic in ancient Rus, the establishment of Orthodox Christianity in ancient Rus, uh, Slavic alphabet and writing, and the first uh, rulers, the first dynasty of Russian rulers, and the dynasty of Rurik uh, traces its roots to the Rurik Gorodish. It's a settlement where they often make movies too. It's all about um, Veliki Novgorod, plus we have fresco paintings. Um, and first of all, I would like to tell a few words about Theophans and um, the Greek. Um, we have a unique school of icon painting. It's born, so to say, in Veliki Novgorod. Till today, we have fragments uh, of uh, Theophanes, the Greek's um, fresco paintings uh, in our churches. For example, in the Church of Transfiguration at uh, Ilyana Street, um, and a lot of uh, feature films uh, and TV series, uh, documentary films uh, are made in that Church of Transfiguration at Ilyana Street. Dear friends, I would also like to let you know that Veliki Novgorod is a unique town because we have 37 cultural heritage sites uh, of UNESCO. It's a small town and we have 37 cultural heritage sites. Plus, I would like to remind it to our foreign partners that uh, Veliki Novgorod uh, as a region is a birthplace of Sergei Rachmaninov, uh, one of the greatest uh, pianists uh, and um, composers. And plus, uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky worked here. We have uh, the Museum of Dostoevsky. It belongs uh, to our open air museum of Veliki Novgorod. People like to make uh, movies there. So you are always welcome, and we will be happy to provide you with all the necessary permitting documents. That is uh, the activity of uh, Film Commission of Novgorod region. As far as our cultural and architectural heritage is concerned, it's absolutely unique. We have stone architecture, we have wooden architecture. You know our famous uh, settlement of Vitoslavlitz, a wooden craft museum. Plus, uh, we have a, a Slavic region of the 10th uh, century. Uh, we have the museum reconstruction of medieval Mano Rushanina. Vitoslavitz uh, is uh, an authentic uh, wooden craft museum. There are original buildings, original architecture, but uh, Rushanina is uh, the imitation of uh, the style. Uh, you can find it in Stare Rus um, in Novgorod region. Both sides um, are in demand um, in terms of filmmaking. In addition to that, we provide our um, assistance uh, with uh, providing permissions. Uh, we take pictures uh, and uh, send necessary pictures uh, of our locations. Um, our main sites are, of course, uh, Kremlin and the Cathedral of St. Sophia various monasteries. Uh, we have a lot of monasteries uh, and convents uh, in uh, Novgorod region. I will not uh, tell you about all of them. Uh, the main ones are Valdai Iversky Monastery and the St. George's Yuryev Monastery. We have unique unique churches, uh, the Savior Church uh, uh, or the Transfiguration Church. They date back to the 12th and 14th centuries. They often come to make movies there and again Transfiguration churches where you can find pieces of the fresco paintings by Theophanes the Greek. 
Plus, we have unique nature and we are happy to boast about it. Uh, we have plains, but we have uh, Ilmen Lake, uh, various water reservoirs, Volkhov River, rapids uh, of the river, hills, um, uh, unique places very close to the city of Veliki Novgorod. And I told you that we have Museum of uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky. Uh, we have uh, another location which is related to the life and creative activity of Rachmaninoff. Um, our unique uh, natural heritage is diverse. Our Novgorod region has plains and swamps, and I'm sure that our colleagues from Russia know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know that we have a lot of swamps in Novgorod region, but in addition to that, we have hills. Uh, I think the highest uh, hills uh, are about 300 meters above the sea level. That is the highest uh, location. It is uh, in Valdai. Now, speaking about uh, the international uh, film companies, uh, which worked here last year, last year we had a Norwegian team that uh, was uh, a story film uh, shot uh, here. They made a fiction film. It was called In the Footsteps of St. Olaf. That was uh, the movie by uh, Chris Christian Carlson and a famous actor Christopher Hivu took part there. Uh, he is uh, famous for being an actor in the Game of Thrones. Um, they made uh, their movie in Trinity Deacon area in various churches, in the Cathedral of Saint Sophia, in the Church of Transfiguration. These are the main religious centers of Veliki Novgorod. I would like to tell you that the film company was surprised in a positive way that our film commission helped uh, them stay in in the territory of Veliki Novgorod. They spent several days here, but we provided all the necessary assistance uh, to them. We booked uh, rooms uh, in the hotel. We provided all the necessary consultations. Uh, we helped them with accommodation, with everyday needs, transportation, food. But the most valuable thing for them was that uh, we preliminary agreed um, with uh, the consultants and uh, interviewers who came to the sites, and, and those were experts who could tell more about the topic of the movie. The authors of the movie know the history really well, and it was really pleasant for them to know something new, to find out about something new. That process was easy in terms of timing, in terms of logistics, it was all easy. The consultants and experts arrived on time. The Film Commission of Novgorod region helped them organize it all, and our activity was productive. The film is not out yet. It's being edited, and our colleagues promised to share this work with us as soon as possible, but we are waiting for it for now. Another foreign filmmaking company, it was a German French uh, TV team uh, which uh, arrived uh, to make an episode uh, in uh, Veliki Novgorod. The program is called uh, Invitation to the trip. It's always necessary to coordinate activity of all the participants uh, of filmmaking process. The team uh, was filming in a restoration workshop. They worked uh, with uh, our experts. Um, Ramashkevich uh, was uh, working with them, and I'm sure that you know this surname. Perhaps uh, some of you have heard about it. That is all us. That is all Veliki Novgorod. That program uh, was already on TV, and we watched it, and we thank our partners uh, who gave us an opportunity to exclusively watch uh, that 
episode of the program. As far as the international um, teams are concerned, uh, they worked here in 2016, and we are proud uh, that uh, War and Peace uh, a movie was uh, made in Novgorod region, but uh, the uh, film commission didn't exist back then. We were founded in 2017, and we worked with uh, such movies as Rurikovici, the first run was on the first uh, TV, it was made by Star Media, and it's one of uh, the winners of rebate competition, uh, Pilot, um, uh, Fairy Woman, made by the Russian TV company, hence uh, the way towards uh, each other, uh, so they made a movie about uh, medieval life, and uh, the first run of the movie was in Veliki Novogorod at the hands days. And as far as the consultations and services of our commission are concerned, we select um, with uh, the locations, we provide permit and documents. As far as accommodation, logistics and transportation is concerned, we also provide consultations uh, and we help them choose uh, the best places. We also provide them with the discounts uh, because uh, we as a film commission have partners uh, and uh, hotels and restaurants can offer discounts uh, for transportation services, food services and so on. Over the last two years uh, we have professional actors, uh, uh, we managed to bring together extras and makeup artists. Uh, we are a small region and we don't have a, a large database of technical personnel, but uh, there are TV studios um, here and there are professional guys working there. I'm speaking about uh, lighting designers, cameramen, and editors. Um, I mean that we are not working in the green field. Um, we organize um, uh, various conferences, we provide uh, consultations uh, free of charge. Uh, we love to organize uh, business meetings, uh, conferences, fora, and first runs. Uh, we organized uh, several fora and events. Uh, some of the events were organized uh, together with other companies, and I would like to go back to 2019. A colleague of mine already spoke about Cineposium in Veliki Novgorod together with Moscow and St. Petersburg hosted the participants of the international event, Cineposium. The representatives of AFCI came here. They spent a couple of days here. Their program was quite uh, um, busy and really, really exciting. So some of the international partners already know about us. We have rebates for the national films so far uh, it's uh, for the Russian companies uh, we rebate 20% of expenditures in 2019 um, uh, the amount was uh, 20 million but now we're in the time of pandemics uh, which uh, brings um, uh, corrections uh, and um, for the next year the announced amount is 10 million but we'll see what the next year brings but the system is there it uh, works uh, we have have uh, four winners uh, of uh, the competition, Rurikovich TV, TV series, uh, uh, Sea Devils um, um, TV series, which was uh, quite popular, uh, Fairy Woman by Gamma Company. They had really good ranking, and the TV series uh, was demonstrated at uh, Russia One TV channel, and uh, another uh, winner is um, a pilot. Um, uh, this movie is uh, still being being produced, but not in our region anymore. Marina, thank you so much for this detailed introduction of the region of Novgorod. Could you please tell, according to your experience, when there is a foreign film crew coming to shoot, what's most important for them? I mean, what's the difference between Russian film crews and foreign film crews? What is the difference in terms of demands, requirements? Which of them are easier or harder to work with? And what's most important for you in this process? We had a small experience um, with working with two companies, uh, two international companies. They made documentaries, they worked uh, in uh, historical aspects. 
And I believe that uh, based on our experience, um, it was very important for our international partners to take care of uh, the content. They have a really referential attitude to the content. They take care of consultants, of uh, people who are going to say something in the movie. They want to make sure that they agree on all the organizational aspects, where to sit, what time slot to choose, how they can organize a meeting, and so on. As far as permissions are concerned, they are necessary for everyone, and I want to to tell you more about the content and uh, the human aspect. Um, that is uh, the experience uh, I have. Uh, they take care of the content, they take care of uh, historians, uh, of experts, uh, how to agree with them to be on time, in the right place, and in the format which is required for them. This kind of assistance is really important. People should have friendly attitude, uh, they should know what kind of movie it is, where they should stand, where they should walk. This is really, really helpful to them. As far as um, in the footsteps of St. Olaf movie is concerned, for example, uh, there were some cases when they were not actors but experts uh, in the movie. I mean, ordinary people, they are characters of the movie and they have to walk somewhere, and they have to do something, they have to go in a certain direction. And but it was clear to them when they didn't have to explain anything to them, it was really, really useful for the international team. And I repeat once again, the content was very important for those who make historical movies. Marina, thank you. Indeed, according to our experience, most of it depends on the management part and on the human part, human factor, because we should not approach formally, we should not only follow all of these procedures. This individual approach, client-based right approach in the broadest sense of it, is very important, indeed. It's important not only to satisfy all the technical demands, but yes, also yes, yes, surround absolutely. the film crew with care and warmth, starting with producers till the cinematographer, etc., etc. And this is a very important factor that makes people come back. Not because there are financial stimuli, but because there is human treatment, client-human-based approach. And of course, everything should be organized flawlessly, first and foremost, that's important. But we truly believe that more and more Russian regions will approach to this meticulous approach to organization. And of course, all of the permission process will be also streamlined. So we are going that way, not only in Moscow, but also in the regions of Russia. Even in those regions which are thousands and thousands of kilometers away from Moscow. Now I would like to request Svetlana Saldatova, the head of uh, the Film Commission of Murmansk, to tell about the most important factors that help her help her to attract international film crews to the region of Murmansk. Murmansk has a lot of experience of working with foreign filmmakers, mostly Scandinavian filmmakers. So let us see the video, the reel about the unique locations of Murmansk. We'll see the diversity of this unique region with unique nature and historic objects.
The region of Murmansk is situated on the borderline of three countries and this unique geographical position, in addition to history and rich nature, provides unique opportunities for filmmaking. Svetlana, please. Yes, uh, it's really so. Dear colleagues, hello. Um, you have seen a short video about Murmansk region and I'm happy that you saw the diversity of locations. We are happy to greet you from one of the most northern regions of Russia, which is located almost completely beyond the polar circle. We are the only region of uh, Eurasia where we have tiger forests from the 66th parallel north to the 69th parallel north. So our climate is mild, which is caused by Gulf Stream. This Atlantic stream finishes in Kola Bay. The Kola Bay never freezes in winter and heats the city of Murmansk as a huge heater. The Murmansk region is located at the border. We have great relations with our neighbors, Finns and Norwegians. We also have great relations with Swedes, though we don't have a common border, but we have a lot of joint projects. One of such projects was born 13 years ago, the International Film Festival Northern Character. It's organized annually in Murmansk. It's a competition program includes films from Russia and northern countries of Europe. The organizer is a private non-profit organization Northern Character. I wanted to remind you about this event because based on that initiative and dialogue platform, the project of regional film commission was born. Our local business has experience of working on large projects. With assistance of local businessmen and the government of our region, we created some parts of the movie by Halward Brain, Scandinavian Fast and Furious, on ice. We closed the central part of Murmansk and we gave them an opportunity to race on Kola Bridge. We helped our Scandinavian partners make movies in the Kola Bay, but it was done privately. I'd like to give you a list of directors who made movies here with local partners. For example, uh, under a rusty star, everything our father this we're fighting for by Hilda Corset, Cool and Crazy by Knut Erik Jensen. One of the most uh, unusual tasks that we had to fulfill upon request of Knut Erik Jensen is to organize uh, the film making of uh, Pizama Kirkenes Offensive. It later expelled German forces from the northern part of Norway. And our designers work with international partners and find common language. But we help not only Scandinavians. Lately, the flow of Asian tourists have grown. Taiwan, China and India made several projects for TV series, movies and online cinemas. One of the projects was called The Northern Lights of Love. We created the Film Commission and our company is authorized by the local government to help production teams. That's why we created the Filmmaking Development Center of Murmansk region. There are four of us. So we come from the area where we created movies for TVs. We have experience of working in the north of Russia. We have great relations with business and government. We know everyone and everyone knows us. We bring together people and business. We help establish relations with the government and business circles. We work with
with the international and Russian production teams. We are always happy to accept uh, creative ideas um, from uh, international teams. As far as rebates are concerned, we have rebates for filmmakers in Murmansk region, but only for Russian projects. You can cover up to 30% of your expenditures uh, in Murmansk region from the local budget. We hope that in the future the system will change uh, and the regional support will also cover the expenditures uh, of international teams uh, and co-productions. Welcome to make films uh, in Murmansk, uh, where the sun never goes down in summer. It's not a joke, the sun doesn't go down here for 41 days each summer. It's the longest period of critical hours. Um, the facades uh, of our buildings uh, are not deformed uh, by AC units uh, because the average temperature in summertime is 15 degrees Celsius. That's why you can easily make movies here about the 20th century. You can fly to us by plane, you can use a railway, you can come by car. And the nearest airport in Europe uh, is uh, Kirkenes. Uh, it's only 240 kilometers uh, from us uh, and it takes only 10 euro to travel there. We want uh, the whole world to know us better. We will help you make Game of Thrones. Svetlana, thank you so much. Speaking about the Game of Thrones, I think the question is really essential to many regions. I mean, are you ready to supervise really big projects at a decent level so that you'd be able to provide all the needs and requirements of the large crews for big projects so that they will be comfortably doing all of the shooting? Can you easily provide all of the necessary services? And how are you getting ready to actually supervise bigger and bigger projects? We started with small projects. Now we can host a group from 50 to 70 persons in any region of Murmansk, except for one of them at the coast line of the White Sea where the infrastructure is lacking. And business also reacts to the flow of filmmakers. We organized quite a large flow of Russian filmmakers as far as the international uh, production uh, companies are concerned. What are they searching here? They're searching here for expenditure cuts. Uh, the personnel is cheaper, the editing is cheaper, and now regions can attract international partners with that. So our task is to make the flow of international and Russian production companies and provide more activity for Russian business. Uh, we can accept a group of 50 persons I would say up to 70 persons, but we want to develop. Svetlana, thank you. Indeed, in the northwest of Russia, there are three film commissions active at the moment. And we believe, we hope that the number of film commissions in Russia will double in the next couple of years, because many regions in the northwest are getting ready to create fully fledged film commissions and fully supervise the process of shooting and again provide targeted financing to international foreign producers. The institution of film commissions will definitely develop in the future. Many thanks to all of the participants of this round table. In conclusion, we would like to show a trailer about the region of Karelia, about the locations in Karelia. At the moment, there is no film commission in that region, but the producers that work with the crews that come to shoot in Karelia, they implement the project called Loki. This is the joint project with Finland. This project monitors different locations and describes their potential to provide to producers different sorts of shooting opportunities in different areas of the region of Karelia. Now there's a database of locations of Karelia that's being created. This is the first step to a fully-fledged film commission to supervise uh, crews, even remotely. And we truly hope that this sort of resource can be transitioned later to the federal level to create a united Russian national database for filming locations for this specific federal film commission, so that there will be a convenient, unified database to 
again, conveniently search for locations throughout Russia. Now they create this thing locally in Karelia. Let's see what they've been able to do. In conclusion, I would like to add that if you have questions to the participants of today's roundtable, or if you have questions about how you can interact with film commissions of the northwest of Russia, you can send those questions to the chat of our roundtable, and we shall gladly answer your questions as soon as possible and share the contacts of the participants and gladly cooperate with you. Thank you.